Yep. Great. So, um, uh, hi everyone. My name is Nastya. Uh, I'm a Ruby developer from Lviv, and uh, today I'm going to talk about Hanami uh, framework. Uh, so this is a short agenda. Uh, first, I'll uh, uh, tell you why I'm talking about Hanami, then I talk a bit about Hanami framework itself, then I will make some uh, conclusions and share with you useful links. Uh, so why I'm talking about Hanami is because I visited uh, Ruby C conference this year in Kyiv, um, and well, uh, now I will contribute in our community and talk about something which I heard there. So actually, uh, I got interested in some uh, Rails alternative called Hanami, uh, which was mentioned by Vujadar Bot, so I guess a lot of guys know about him, famous Ruby guy. <laughs> And uh, well, he said that it was uh, trying this framework. So I decided to like investigate a bit about this framework. Um, so Hanami, where comes this name? Actually, Hanami, it's the process of like starting at uh, a Japanese cherry trees. It's like holiday, every year holiday in Japan. Um, it happens in spring. Uh, beautiful event, but actually today's talking not about this. So let's uh, go ahead. Uh, so Hanami, it's a modular rack compiling Ruby web framework. It's, uh, it promotes uh, incremental design of application and it like strongly uh, emphasize on separation of concerns. Uh, I, like, and it is uh, based on MVC uh, uh, pattern. So, um, like, uh, it, uh, it is inspired by two main concepts. It's a, a clean architecture, like uh, something presented by uh, Uncle Bob, and uh, monolith first uh, stuff, which was, like, written by uh, Martin Fowler. So, uh, formerly, this framework was known as Lotus, but there were some troubles with, like, name collision, because IBM had uh, some project with the same name. So, uh, finally, it, now it's called Hanami. Uh, creator is Luca Guidi, uh, a guy from Italy, and it started, uh, like, uh, approximately in 2013, 2014. Um, okay. So I like to explain a bit philosophy of Hanami. It's that in the core you have some, for example, use cases, and then you use different delivery mechanisms uh, to deliver uh, this like uh, functionality that you have in the core uh, using interfaces. Uh, so let's uh, see at the project structure. Uh, some files are similar. Uh, like uh, we saw before, like gem file, some directories like spec, public. Uh, but uh, what uh, may take your attention is apps directory because we are like uh, used to have one app and we may have separate apps. And that's like the main, main idea in Hanami that you ha can have uh, different applications uh, which serve one product. Uh, so, uh, and also uh, we will be uh, discussing a lib directory, which actually contains all the business logic uh, and domain model. Uh, so let's go further. Apps directory. As I uh, said, you can create multiple uh, components, uh, multiple apps, uh, which are components of your product. Uh, Moreover, uh, you can um, deploy them separately if a such need arose. Um, and uh, like um, to conclude this, uh, you have an ability to develop applications as monolith, uh, but deploy each uh, one other uh, separately. Uh, here we, I can mention about, uh, for example, microservices, uh, which may be used in some on different situations, on different uh, projects. But as uh, I said, that, like, the, the main idea of Hanami is to uh, separation of uh, concerns. Uh, 
let's see an example. For example, we have some project and we have a web application to deal with some plain users. For example, it's some uh, like a bookshelf project and uh, so users uh, can see some books, uh, rates of books. But then uh, you need to add feature of uh, like, like uh, admin part of this application, which actually don't need to know anything about delivery mechanism of web application, but still it serves at the same product. And at the same time, you may want to have uh, uh, yet another application which will serve uh, mobile applications. Uh, so you will have like three applications in one product for one product. Um, let's go next is uh, it's a lib directory. And here uh, you can see a uh, file bookshelf rb. Uh, bookshelf, uh, it's our like sample application um, in Hanami. So uh, here we ha will have uh, all the configuration. Uh, then we have entities, repositories, and mailers. So uh, something different, which like we are not used to, are entities and repositories. Uh, so we will talk about them next. Um, and, uh, to summarize, in Lib we store all the uh, business logic uh, of the uh, of our uh, product. Okay, so uh, here I introduce entity. Uh, it's like it is in the core of the application. It's part of the domain uh, logic. Uh, it deals only with with one responsibility. Uh, and um, it uh, helps developers like to concentrate on the behavior of this uh, entity. Here we have sample entity uh, book. Uh, next, uh, we may uh, go with uh, automat automatic schema for entity. So for example, if we have such a table in our database, then we will have such a class in Hanami, it uh, like uh, implicitly uh, we will have uh, accessors to our attributes. Like we will have attributes such as ID, title, created at, and updated at. We may define our custom schema. Uh, as you can see in Hanami entity, uh, our uh, entity user. Uh, so you define them, you set some types so you can even uh, like hang some constraints uh, but uh, be careful because for example when you are changing a table with uh, migration uh, you will have to ch uh, update the schema by your hands manually because custom schema uh, takes precedence over automatic schema uh, Okay, then we introduce a repository. Actually, like to say it uh, plainly, a uh, repository it's a layer which mediates between our entities, some domain models, and uh, the persistent layer, it, like uh, and and database. Let's say it this way. Uh, it offers uh, uh, some API, and as you can see, it's really really small, uh, like. Hanami is really a framework which uh, throws away all the unnecessary uh, stuff, unnecessary uh, methods in uh, interface. So you can see it here. Uh, because, for example, if we take our Rails, Rails model, <laughs> we, we may see there uh, first, uh, for example, validations. Then we can see there a callbacks. Then we can see some and definitions of associations with uh, another entities, and that's too much, definitely. Uh, so we uh, write queries in our repositories, which we actually need. Uh, all queries are private, so you will not be writing uh, like uh, you will not be um, like write write these queries uh, anywhere in your project where you want. Uh, you need to write them in repositories. So if you want, like, find most recent book by author, you write a query in book uh, repository. Uh, and that's, that's all. Um, 
like uh, you can see that first example on the top it, it is bad because uh, like caller knows the logic how uh, uh, some data is extracted and that's bad and the second version is obviously much much better uh, okay uh, now legacy databases uh, it concerns with repositories also so for example when you have some old database or you want to migrate from some on different framework to Hanami framework, uh, then, uh, and you have all database, you can uh, easily do this. Uh, you can map in a repository, uh, like namings uh, of your tables and attributes. As you can see here, um, you have operator repository, and you set uh, how, uh, like, uh, which table and database corresponds to it, and you map attributes use like uh, more intuitively understandable names of attributes. Uh, okay, uh, the next topic is associations. It's quite interesting topic. Uh, but uh, the key thing is that when uh, we declare associations uh, and we declare them in repositories, it's quite obvious because that's the place where we communicate with database uh, the repository does not get any uh, extra method uh, to it, its public interface and um, actually as i already mentioned hanami throws away all the uh, unnecessary methods uh, which you probably will never need to use so you should define your own method so you you will not have something like when you have association like author.books after dot books where well, you, you cannot do this in Hanami um, so you, you may feel something uh, like that like <laughs> you were given a, a empty candy wrapper because of the, like there is association but there's almost nothing under it under it uh, so for example uh, when you have um, tables or ta table for out authors uh, on the left and a table for books on the right you can see we defined here foreign key like defined actual association then we write here all the queries that we need so here we declare association and write some queries which we may need uh, actually exactly which we, which we will need uh, like know some unnecessary data here um, and uh, that's actually Mm, maybe mm, cons there are cons and pros because probably you will need to write uh, with your hands a lot of uh, methods uh, but that prevents uh, some mm, blood code actually um, so here is an example uh, here we create an uh, instantiate a repository author repository and uh, we use um, this method create with books which we defined here as you can see uh, and uh, just uh, gave it some uh, parameters for actually author and uh, array of consist of one book uh, so we have here this uh, author with association like with books id name books all this we can now access but uh, let's look on the second example for example we are um, extracting some author from a rep author repository with a find method i'll just uh, remind you that uh, this find method we are getting from actually a hanami association uh, so we at least find we don't have to uh, define by ourselves so we extract it and we try to uh, get books but what happened? Uh, we get nil. And why does it happen? That's happened because we haven't explicitly loaded the associated records, that is, books. Uh, so uh, they will be not loaded. So again, we should uh, use our uh, own custom query for this and extract, like, load this association, uh, association um, collection. So we use find with books and now we can access books so you can see uh, here this method uh, actually this syntax may 
a bit confused uh, confuse you but uh you can you may check uh, rom rb that's a ruby object mapper um uh, it's like uh, orm uh, which may be used uh, in in hanami actually hanami a model is based on on this orm uh, but that's not exactly it i'm just talking about the syntax of this query okay so let's go further uh, okay, let's talk now about action. Interesting thing in Hanami is uh, that you have controllers, but they are just modules uh, which con uh, contain uh, classes, uh, which are actually actions. <laughs> because, uh, for example, in Rails, we have a class a controller and uh, actions are just some some methods but here actions are objects uh, and, uh, and that's a bit of a surprise for us uh, but actually it, it might have some advantages uh, for example uh, testing because uh, testing an object is like uh, more i don't know more easy uh, than uh, test some method in for example from rails or controller um, so just for you to understand here, we have, for example, some controller in Rails. We have two actions, index and show. And in uh, Hanami, we will have like module, admin controllers, users, and two separate classes, class for index and class for show. Let's uh, uh, look more like deeply on uh, controllers. Um, actually on actions so here we can see we include that action it is uh, used like uh, in some uh, core, core hanami uh, action but uh, we use here a web just to use configurations of a web application because as i said we may have um, multiple applications and each of it will have some specific configuration that's why I include web action Web, it, that's the name of our application. Uh, also, the next uh, interesting thing here is expose. Uh, expose defines uh, which like uh, data uh, we will show to our views. Uh, because probably we'll, we will not have to share all the data uh, with our view, which we have here. And uh, here we have only one public methods method a call which receives only one uh, argument it is params and here you instantiate some uh, variable which you then expose to uh, to view we are exposed okay and some some uh, things about parameters so uh, parameters and nested param parameters are referenced only uh, with uh, symbols and also we may have some whitelisting in our for our parameters which we receive uh, from user here you can see uh, we uh, specify that we have some required fields uh, and then uh, in call we actually can access uh, have access to them and for example this param admin is like not accessible because even if user pass it uh, to us, we didn't uh, whitelist it here. So it will be nil in our call uh, method. And next thing I want to talk about is a validation. Uh, probably strange enough, but I didn't talk it about, about it when I was talking about uh, entities and repositories. And that's all because validation is performed in our actions. Um, it's quite uh, like something maybe new for us, but actually it's a very good approach because uh, if we think um, model is like the first uh, uh, layer uh, in our MVC from from user from uh, data which it passes to our application, and it like this data is doing really a uh, very long way to get to the model and uh, 
then to uh, get validated that's quite like not very cool i would say and uh, just imagine a situation where you have for example feature sign up sign up for some event and uh, uh, you will have a validation of uh, for user to like uh, provide his login and his password uh, so you uh, like password is uh, must be filled and is required but for example we introduce new feature in vt so user can provide only his login like his name let's say and its password he can uh, give it us later so what we will do for example in rails we will do a condition in our uh, validation like if it is NVT, then we are not checking, uh, like the password is not required. Other way it is required. And uh, that's this condition, it's not good. It's bad for main, further maintenance of our project. But here we are checking directly in our actions. Uh, and like no, no conditions. Uh, we have may have some different validation for different circumstances, like different actions. Uh, okay, so we validate params here, as you can see, uh, to Ali. Okay, uh, <laughs> params do, and uh, like we specify that some fields are required, uh, they filled with some type of data, uh, with, like some format, uh, confirmation, it's uh, when we like have two fields and we, we need to com confirm it's a common for passwords. Um, if you maybe you if you are familiar, it is uh, from dry validation. Actually, dry rb library, which uh, was created uh, like the creator is the same as a rom rb uh, uh, ORM, which I mentioned er earlier. It's created by Piotr Solnisa. Uh, probably you heard about him. Uh, so that when we validated our prompts, we can. Uh, ask if they are valid in our call method. But actually, it uh, may be a bit visually noisy uh, when you write so much code in your action. So you can just extract your uh, params validation into a separate class, as you can see. It uh, would be more, more uh, cleaner, I would say. Okay, then after this, I would like uh, to talk about testing because testing, as was mentioned, it's really like easy, uh, intuitively understandable. So you insta instantiate action. It's an object. Uh, you can see how you can do this. And you specify some repository, user repository, you can see here. And uh, like we created a double, we mocked our repository. And then just expect some values uh, of our response object and uh, action uh, object. You can see that's quite uh, trivial. But uh, what I want to emphasize here is uh, that actually it's very convenient to do dependency injection. You can see that instead of, for example, instantiating in our test uh, real user, I mean uh, access database, which is not quite good in tests, you just mock it because here in our um, action, we are use a kind of dependency injection. It's like just some uh, good example uh, of organizing uh, code. And now, uh, okay, we go next to you. It's object which obviously responsible for rendering a template. So we have a basically different like separate directories. It's views directory and uh, templates directory. So uh, in Hanam application, we have some incoming HTTP request. It goes through a router, uh, instantiate an action, and uh, which may set it, which sets actually some status code for our response headers uh, and actually our view is uh, goes uh, for a body of the response. Um, okay, uh, then we may see uh, 
like uh, just interesting thing that context for our templates and we can use like different engines here we use ARB we may use HAML and like there is a list of engines in documentation you may check so uh, the context for our template will be uh, like get from our view object and also uh, from uh, we will access stuff which we actually um okay um which we exposed in our action so we take something from action and something from our view like combined uh, context uh, and a bit about views we may handle several mime types it's quite it's obvious um, you can specify custom error pages just naming them after a status code for example internal server error you may call like a template like this like name will be this number uh, 500 and uh, you can have multiple template layouts like usually layout some stuff that doesn't changes uh, like footer header but sometimes you need to uh, hide it like need some another for example from login page and uh, actually for handling several mime types you may define uh, separate classes here you have json index inherits from index uh, and you specify that it accepts uh, format json and uh, like uh, important thing when you uh, redefine render method in uh, your view the process will not go to your template you just return this stuff and that's all you may delete your template and the same works actually for actions and views uh, because if you in action in call method if you remember uh, you, you have access to response object and if you set body of this response to some some string then process will not go to a uh, view object so in this way you may delete uh, views and templates and just return somebody from action uh, probably it's useful when you perform delete action actually uh, okay so um, good uh, like I guess that's uh, of course it's not the full information about Hanami framework it would take a lot of time and to be honest like a uh, step aside from the documentation or uh, guides of Hanami and uh, information is very hard to google uh, like so I'll do some conclusions uh, what what are the pros pros are that we actually have quite good documentation and guides uh, it really uh, built on like a uh, great architecture so as i mentioned on clean architecture and monolith first uh, it really inspires you to write things uh, in the right way and don't uh, don't have a lot of um, methods for example in public interface which you will never use so it is that's why the next uh, point it is lightweight no some mm, unnecessary code unnecessary methods uh, also oh, uh, i didn't mention it earlier but you can change orm actually you can uh, use active record instead uh, instead of uh, hanami's uh, model i don't know why would you do this but actually you can or you can use rom rb uh, like it, uh, how, how you like it uh, so you will need to delete all the lib uh, directory and uh, change configuration files to like load your models uh, next pro is that uh, it like behaves uh, explicit or implicit so you explicitly specify what you need and there is almost no magic in hanami uh, framework 
and uh, of course, as like I was searching in some uh, articles, uh, they stated that it really consumes less memory than Rails. Well, probably less code, and that's why it consumes less memory. Uh, that's usually uh, the case. Uh, also, there are cons. Um, so, as I said, documentation is good, but not actually great. Uh, that's because it's a young framework and actually a young community, not so many people, but still uh, it seems it grows and like when you want to find something specific about uh, Hanami, usually it will be some <laughs> blogs of uh, enthusiastic guys about it. Uh, it doesn't support many gems, which would you like to have, for example, device, it's something low, uh, like strange like and not comfortable uh, but still uh, it uh, supports like it works with sidekick with uh, websock and so on mm. so next uh, you will need uh, to write a great deal of code because as you saw in our repositories you write what you need and you don't get some extra uh, methods uh, and also learning curve because when you have, for example, some new guys in your team, they need to have like to, to learn about Hanami to uh, work with you. And uh, well, that's all about conclusions. Here I share with you some useful links. Uh, they have uh, Hanami have like a chat where you can ask anything about it and. Uh, uh, People will help you, contributors will help you. Mm, and I guess that's all. So thank you guys. And maybe someone has some questions. Yeah, I have a question. What, um, uh, do you feel this, um, this framework fits for, uh, for what sizes uh, of project it fits the best? What do you think about this? Because we have to write a lot of additional code and do you feel it fits for huge or big, relatively big project, A? Eh? Yes, you're right, actually. It's a like, good question because, for example, if you need to deliver some uh, quickly some uh, application uh, with some authentication and so on, you will probably use Rails. Like, But Hanami is better when you uh, like some growing project usually in rails when you have really a huge project you will continue with microservices but sometimes it's not the case but because your application is not so big uh, but still there there are some features we, which like don't uh, don't have to deal together as i mentioned earlier so you have some separate applications web admin and api which like they have different uh, delivery targets like um, yep so for really small applications you may go with rails um, but for a bigger one it's when you need to separate some like uh, your, your product on some separate apps yep thank you